We are back and we continue with very interesting content. And our next session, it's our keynote fireside chat. And we are very, very pleased and so honored to have our next speakers with us. Starting with Mr. Christopher Hugh, Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, together with Lei Zhang, founder and CEO of Hill House Group. Please welcome them on stage. Uh, hi, Zhang. Thanks for being with us. And as the founder and CEO of Hill House, I think many people know you as a pioneer investing in many of our Hong Kong early stage technology driven companies. I'm just wondering if you can take this opportunity to share with us your investment philosophies and also, in particular, any interesting investment stories that you would like to share with us. Yes. Thank you, Secretary Hui, for the kind introduction. It's uh, really an honor and pleasure for me to be here to share with the uh, community about our investments and our uh, views of the uh, Hong Kong innovation community. Um, you know, really, you are touched on a very interesting topic about innovation in Hong Kong. And I think that what we are excited about is really the people in Hong Kong, the community that we see that continue to innovate, to create new business models, new ideas. I give some examples of uh, what we are excited about. And it's really across a broad range of uh, industries. And uh, uh, you know, I, we, we are the first early institutional investor and the largest institutional investor in company Lala Move which is essentially an internet platform company. We are the first and largest institution investor in uh, uh, Little Freddy, which is actually organic baby food, homegrown Hong Kong company, and a number of SaaS technology company, the uh, Air Wallex, the, uh, um, um, the Aftership, the number of SaaS companies as well, and even biotech and life science, now uh, part of uh, Illumina. Uh, uh, what we are uh, excited, what we see in common among those entrepreneurs, maybe I could share that. And uh, I would say uh, number one is really the fast learning, the open mind, the idea of constant learning and making the organization a learning organization. Uh, so you see that at clearly a trend among the top entrepreneurs. Because you, if you look back on the initial, original business plan compared to today, <laughs> it's almost like complete different businesses. <laughs> people change, people keep on adapting. So we are very excited to see the entrepreneurs who continue to adapt and with their fast learning capabilities. I would say secondly, it's about the view about how to make the pie bigger. Uh, and the idea of focusing not only on what money you could make, but look at the whole industry, look at the whole value chain, and how we could work together and get everybody to make a pie bigger. I think that mentality is actually very hard uh, because a lot of people are very focused on their competitors. But the real great entrepreneurs, successional entrepreneurs, they actually focus on their end users, focus on their customers, instead of being really uh, very much only looking at what a competitor is doing, they truly study based on first principle on what the entrepreneurs and what the end users and what the internally their organization been doing. And finally, I would say that uh, ab about, you know, this, somehow there's this grit, the 
you know, resilience that we see in those great entrepreneurs, that they continue to keep on thinking about how do I do this better in front of not only the good times, but also sometimes with challenges. So, you know, like Mac Tyson said, you know, uh, uh, every, everybody has a plan until being punched in the face. <laughs> how do you plan yourself when you are being punched in the face? And how do you keep on adapting? How do you have that resilience? We are pretty excited uh, with this community, uh, especially when we have those entrepreneurs around. Mm -hmm. Maybe Sector Hui, if I have this opportunity, I'm actually curious about this uh, in Hong Kong and the we to nurture ecosystem for growth and innovation in Hong Kong. It's very important to be on the same page as the on the government policy. Uh, could you maybe share with us on Hong Kong's plan to further develop in innovation and in particularly on the fintech industry? Mm. Um, I think as you highlighted what you just said about those entrepreneurs in terms of being adaptive, in terms of being resilient, and also being able to continuously learning is very much exactly what we're trying to do and also what we try to demonstrate as a government. Because after all, technology is moving fast. Like for some today, we have a fireside chat without fire. So it is something that we keep on being adaptive in terms of what more we can do to facilitate the growth of this ecosystem further. So on that front, um, we are pursuing uh, right now three-prone approach trying to grow this ecosystem. First of all is the open data policy. Mm -hmm. um, as you may know, the XAMA just announced under the policy address, um, the chief executive highlighted the plan, the launch of the commercial data interchange. This whole idea is to build out a consent-based platform in such a way that financial institutions, in particular banks, can access the business data of companies in such a way that they can better appraise the credit worthiness of those companies, in particular our SMEs, mm. such that their financing cost and also the way they get financing can be made easier. So on that count, what government can do is provide the data, mm. and we have a wealth of data in various domains that we possess, like, for example, the company's registry, which now in possession of over a million data regarding those companies. So we are looking into how we can feed that into this common platform in such a way that the banks can get access to the information. And with this information, they can better assess the financial position of the companies, in particular SMEs. And so as a result, they can rely less on the collateral of those companies, but rather on their business data and also on their business prospects to make lending decisions. So this is number one, is open data. And number two, I think, is about policy and also cross-agency or cross-regulatory coordination. Like, for example, uh, we have uh, under uh, our regulatory regime, SFC, MA, uh, Insurance Authority, they are each doing a fantastic job in terms of pursuing innovation and regulatory sandboxes. And also, at the same time, regulators aside, we have Invest Hong Kong and also a lot of agencies under the government at the same time, try to bring to Hong Kong more players and more interest in the fintech space. So the next question to ask is how we can bring all these efforts together mm. in such a way that a more coordinated approach can be sustained and in such a way that uh, we will restate a coordination group, basically, which I will chair. The whole idea is to identify the key areas where these cross-agency coordination is required such that better policy as better initiatives can be crafted. Because what I see is that right now, there are a number of key trends coming up, like, for example, green, the sustainability, at the same time, fintech, and also broadly, impact investment. Yep. And underlying these investment themes, there are family offices, and also a lot of high net worth families and individuals who are interested in these investment themes. So Hong Kong is uniquely placed to take advantage of these trends. Because you look at historical data, just the year 2020, the AUM managed out of Hong Kong has grown more than 20%. And with that AUM, basically more than 62% is from sources other than Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is already and will continue to be a wealth and also a asset management center. 
And that aside, another key theme that we're trying to pursue is about risk management. Mm -hmm. I think COVID and also uh, climate change and COP26 is now taking place, really presents us with new perspectives in terms of how we look at risk. Because previously, people look at financial means or financial resources or financial services as a means to create wealth and create value. And that's actually the case. But apart from value and wealth creation, we also need to look at risk management. And that's why today, I'm sure that many of our uh, participants will be able to see many of the innovations taking place in our insurer tech space. Mm. Because insurance and also broadly risk management is getting important and also becoming a very prevalent theme as an investment and also as a tool. So there's something that we hope through this coordination effort, we can have a better coordinated approach to this fintech system. And finally, apart from open data and also coordination, it's about people. Mm. And if you look at the policy address, uh, we have put in a number of areas of measures, try to grow our talent. And I see talent in three areas. First of all, is to identify and also grow our local talent. And secondly, is to reskill our current professionals. And thirdly, is to bring talent from abroad. And on the first two, uh, first of all, we are now working with our colleagues in the government to enhance our qualifications framework already in place to build in the fintech element in such a way that people in general, in particular, the employers and employees can have a reference point when they try to gain their fintech expertise, they will know at what point those qualifications will mean for their overall qualifications. And a second initiative that we are pursuing is in terms of trying to reskill our current professionals. Because FinTech, um, it come to me, encompasses two areas, Fin and Tech, and we need to bring them together. And one way is to make sure that our current financial professionals are well equipped, not just of today's knowledge, but knowledge for the future. And that's why we will bring to them experts and also key leaders in the theme of uh, FinTech, InsurTech, in particular wealth tech, so on and so forth, in such a way they can be well abreast of the latest trends and put them in practice in the daily workplace and we'll put resources to cyberport to ask them to help us to do so. So all in all, it's a three-pronged approach as of now. Um, people, data, and also policy coordination so as to grow this ecosystem further. Mm. It's really exciting to hear that. that it's, this is, provides a backdrop for the growth and the innovation in Hong Kong. Mm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Lei, um, as you highlighted, uh, there are many interesting uh, investment stories that you have just shared with us. And I know that you are a uh, big fan of wake serving. Mm -hmm. So how do you see those personal passion of yours being translated into your investment approach and philosophies? <laughs> yes, I'm a big snowboarder and I'm into uh, you know, living in Hong Kong for 10 years. I also very much enjoy hiking and, uh, and some water sports as well. So that, uh, I think it's really, I see some similarities, right? You know, when you snowboard, what do you learn? Lesson number one, you know, you uh, learn to stand up where you fall, <laughs> right? So that's, uh, and you know, when wake surfing, you also have to uh, overcome all those, uh, uh, some of the turbulence in the, in the water. I think that having that ability to continue to adapt that's what we see the common traits among entrepreneurs. Mm. And for investors, like, I think the, how do you work with the best entrepreneur, enable them to realize their full potential? Uh, that's what we are most excited about. Mm. So I think these, uh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking at those, the successful cases we had versus the lessons that we learned on investing. It's all about whether you can have the time, what we call the able to have the capacity to spend quality time with quality people. Mm. So um, I, I, I think this is a very exciting era for innovation. I just see a uh, uh, prospect ahead. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm sure many people will be interested, not just in your success stories. Yeah. You highlight lessons to be learned or lessons already learned. Are there any, I would say, failures or less successful stories that you can share with us in terms of take key takeaways, such that in terms of you building up this whole portfolio of Hong Kong-based innovation companies, any down set stories or relatively unsuccessful stories you would like to share? Yeah, 
Um, that's really uh, uh, something that we constantly go back and uh, review. Uh, what are the, not only the failures, but also the companies that really haven't realized their full potential. <laughs> that uh, if you could look at them, I think uh, th there are many varieties. But a couple of things that I want you to highlight. Uh, one is about the focus and focus on building the organization and focus on the, uh, what I said earlier, on the ending customers, not just on competitors. We see some very competitive entrepreneurs who wanting to always to want to be number one, but they sometimes they lost the idea of why they started this in the first place, <laughs> right? You started your company to solve an issue, a particular hard issue of a customer base and somehow they are just taking too much attention, putting too much attention on competitors than what they do. So I think don't lose your focus. Secondly, I would say, how do you translate from a one man or super one man, superman, mm -hmm. to an organization strength? Mm -hmm. We'll look at some of the lessons we learned. It's a lot about whether entrepreneurs can go beyond themselves, just not about I'm Superman, I can do 24 seven, but also I can nurture talents around me. I can recruit and bring the best people around oneself. I think that having that capacity is very important. And finally, I would say still the people side is about that empathy, that feeling being connected. I've seen some entrepreneurs who become high flying, but the flip side to that is they got disconnected. <laughs> they got disconnected with their own uh, organization. They got disconnected with the ending customer that they're servicing. And the many of them are much uh, you know, less uh, successful. And how do you still um, being connected with that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is something that we see, continue to see that innovation uh, helps bringing out the best of people, but also you don't want them to lose the origin where they start from. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what you said seems more like not just about investment, but about life at large. Right. Like being focused on what you really are, being true to yourself, yet at the same time continuously adapting and continuously learning. Yeah. So I'm sure that many of our fintech companies here in Hong Kong, there are more than 600 of them. Um, they are also looking for investment opportunities and also investors like you. So is there any advice that you can share with us, with them, in terms of the fintech companies here in Hong Kong? What are the specific sectors that you see that is of particular strength here and also particular potential in such a way that they can focus on those areas and make them stronger? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a broad range of innovation happening across the fintech sector. There could be you could build the next best, most trustworthy brand in a particular segment of a fintech, or and you could be a uh, tech enabling software services that s serve a particular segment. If you think about the fintech innovation, essentially you are unbundle a lot of traditional financial services and trying to repackage them in a technology efficient way. So I think, how do you do that? You know, how do you unbundle something? How do you repackage something? I think the, what's looking behind that, it's all about whether you can either make it more efficient and whether you make, make it technology. Uh, and because once you have technology, then you, time is your friend. You can keep on innovating. And when you have the best risk management, Risk management, not just in the sense of managing the particular risk of what you do, but also look at the whole value chain. How can you help the whole value chain to be much more uh, risk, much better risk management systems? I think that across this whole arena, we see opportunity set. And also Hong Kong is a super connector. I think that Hong Kong doing based on Hong Kong cannot be go beyond Hong Kong. And, uh, you know, uh, Greater Bay, I think there's huge opportunities out there. And, um, you know, actually I'm gonna post a question for you about Greater Bay and our initiatives. And uh, uh, to the outside world, uh, to global. And uh, we, we invested, uh, 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 actually a software company, uh, Hong Kong local entrepreneur, and now 
potentially adding a lot of fintech functions into the businesses. Uh, and uh, they, because they really uh, looking through the whole package, the whole suite of products and services, and they say, wait a minute, how can I service my customer better? Instead of saying, okay, this is what my competitor be doing, they say, actually, we could add that um, risk management digital wallet so that my customers can feel safer to be and more integrated uh, with my services. I think we are seeing a broad range of opportunities, but in the end, it's about whether you can leverage technology, particularly software, to unbundle the products and repackage them together. Mm -hmm. But you know, talking about the opportunity set for Hong Kong talents, I'm, I'm, uh, I think the, uh, the, they, sh they should look beyond Hong Kong. I mean, based out of Hong Kong, but look beyond Hong Kong, one of the big growth opportunities actually is Greater Bay. And uh, uh, I noticed that the government has, an, uh, has really, uh, is doing a lot about uh, working closer with the Greater Bay. And uh, uh, Chief Executive just announced uh, uh, Wealth Management Connect. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could share with us uh, some of the policies regarding the Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, Time and again, I do uh, see a lot of chambers and also uh, investors in my current role. I think the key word that always pops up in the discussion is the word GBA. Yep. There's been a lot of interest in there. And if you look at our GBA as compared with those already found elsewhere in the world, i.e. those in New York, uh, Tokyo, and also in San Francisco, um, what I see is that we have the best of three of them in Hong Kong, three in one. Hong Kong is similar to New York, being the financial center. And in terms of our neighbor Shenzhen, it is similar to what you see in Silicon Valley, in San Francisco. And what you see in terms of the advanced manufacturing capabilities of the Tokyo Bay Area, you can find them across the boundary in our Guangdong province, across different cities. So it's actually very economical and very efficient if for global investors to come to Hong Kong and they can get all three benefits in one Bay Area. And also at the same time, if you look more microscopically in terms of this part of the world, uh, it takes up around like 5% um, of a country's population, but it generates around like 12% of the country's GDP. So it's highly productive. And back to the point about wealth creation and value creation, uh, around like one-fifth or one-sixth of the high net worth families are actually in this part of the world in terms of overall China. So on that front, there's a lot of us uh, benefits, advantages, and also stories to tell, and also to build upon in terms of how we can grow this fintech in space in such a way that there's broader connectivity between the different cities in GBA in such a way that more value can be created. And that's exactly what we are trying to pursue. Because as you highlighted, a lot of the technologies in the fintech space involve cross-boundary payments, or like, for example, insurance claim management, so on and so forth. All these involve a lot of technologies, yet at the same time, ultimately, it involves a laser-sharp focus on user experience. Because after all, as the mobility of people across GBA getting more frequent, people will eventually demand better services and more so more personal services. And FinTech is exactly what they want. And like, for example, on the Wealth Management Connect, as you just highlighted, uh, it has been in operation for a few weeks, and the result is highly encouraging. It has been built on the connectivity that we already have in the stock market with the Stock Connect and also the bond market of Bond Connect, and now it's about connectivity in the banking sector. And with that Connect, basically we allow individuals, not just corporates, to buy the banking products in the mother market through their banks in Hong Kong. And reciprocally, for the mainland investors, they can do so through their local banks to buy the Hong Kong's bank's products. And on that count, this connectivity, I would see that's only going to get stronger because with this accumulation of wealth I just highlighted, and also with Hong Kong being a perfect avenue for asset diversification for our mainland investors and also for global investors, this is something that will continue to deepen as Hong Kong is and will continue to be the international and also comprehensive financial center of the world. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a lot of innovation opportunity for FinTech with all those uh, connected for the yeah. GBA. There are uh, regulatory sandbox that you earlier talked about coordinating and how could uh, the sandbox work 
uh, in this environment? What, what's your vision for the regulatory sandbox? Yeah. Um, I think broadly, in terms of our connectivity with the mainland, uh, policy and regulation is one of the key areas that we work on. Um, and you mentioned this cross-boundary regulatory sandbox as announced by HKMA and also PBOC earlier through the signing of MOU. So the idea is that to create a one-stop shop, potentially try to see how the fintech applications or tech applications in one market can be applied cross-boundary. Yeah. So because right now already within our different regulators, SFC, Insurance Authority, and also uh, MA, for example, they already have their own regulatory sandbox. But how we can make it cross-boundary, I think that's the first step. And regulation aside, I think there's also other number of policy areas they're working on in terms of bridging this connectivity. Uh, we already have the Stock Connect, uh, Bond Connect, and also the Banking Connect in some way, the Wealth Management Connect at individual investors level. So the next thing we try to push for is an after-sales service center for our insurance sector. Um, because after all, there are many interests in the policies being developed uh, with our insurers here in Hong Kong. And for those insurance policies to be surfaced, like payment of premium or exchanging contract terms so on and so forth, they could be done in GBA without the need for those people to come over once those policies are taken out. So it's something that we are now pursuing, hopefully trying to get a result in terms of having these after sales service centers for the insurance sector. And another dimension for GBA is not just about this uh, kind of a physical presence, but more at the same time about policy enablement. Um, I think one element which is a key to GBA development is about Tian Hai. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the 14-5 year plan, apart from the 14-5 plan, 14 year plan itself, setting out Hong Kong's positions as a center across five are eight areas, uh, there's also a, a Tian Hai plan. And Tianhai is being positioned as an area that is going to foster closer Hong Kong citizen collaboration. And that's why uh, we are now in discussion with Tianhai as well to see how our PE markets, like for example, our limited partnership funds already set up in Hong Kong yeah. can have better access to the PE space in China. And also, apart from the fund itself, we are also looking into ways to broaden the service area of our professionals here in Hong Kong. Because after all, Hong Kong being a service economy and a city economy, we need to continuously enlarge the catchment area of our service. And like, for example, you talk about making the pie bigger, such that everybody can get a better share and a bigger share. And that's exactly what we have been trying to do and will continue to do. And on that front, accountants is not something now we are working on. Hopefully, we can get them expanding their service, service provision in Tianhai in such a way that we can further export our professional services and financial services to GBA at large. Because after all, I think GBA as part of the country is a big hinterland for all of us. And Hong Kong being a service economy with over 95% of GDP driven by service, in, service industries, we have a lot to export and a lot to share and to be adopted cross boundary Because right now, if you talk about GBA at large, the proportion of tertiary industries, of service industries, is around like 60 odd percent, mm. which is still low vis-a-vis -vis that of 80-something percent for other international Bay Areas. So Hong Kong has a unique role to play. And back to today's theme, I think FinTech as one of the key areas in financial services is definitely significantly featured in this whole export of professional services. Yes, absolutely. It's very exciting for me to see that the development plan is very much a ecosystem-based, just not one area, but focusing on the services, regulatory sandbox, and the uh, talent development and integration GPA. And I think that's really very much a trend. We are seeing that helping the entrepreneurs grow and that because you need this ecosystem to work, not just the uh, particular one area of yeah. development. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, Zhang, I know that your family is in Hong Kong and you have interests both globally, US, Hong Kong, wherever. So if in your mind, Hong Kong and FinTech, immediately on your mind, what's, what do you think about it? How do you link these two together? Well, Hong Kong as a really global financial center, really genetically to be suited for the next innovation chapter, which is a FinTech, actually. Mm -hmm. I think there's a genetic linkage there, and there's also 
the whole ecosystem very conducive for the fintech development. I think the next step, I would say, is very much focusing on the talent development. How do we open up the talent space? And, um, you know, from just as you said earlier, the local development, reskill talents, then the new talents, uh, talent from abroad. But we have to make the talent grow the community, grow the talent. And, uh, and also, I think the Hong Kong also has a unique advantage to be the super connector that uh, to be able to connecting to the outside world and also connecting to the GBA and the whole mainland China. I think that if we could leverage that, developing talents, developing the sandbox and the regulatory framework and develop, leveraging the super connector, we have a big chance for Hong Kong to be the uh, global financial center for fintech. Mm -hmm. I think it's just very well said and also very much in line with what we have been thinking because if you look at what we have proposing and adopted, I think we will try to see what are the key areas we can focus on to grow this ecosystem. And people definitely is one area and we have a particular talent program in place to bring in local ta global talent and also groom local talent. And at the same time, to talk about like innovation, and Hong Kong, as you said, is genetically determined to be an international financial center. But that said, many of the success factors are not just relevant financial center, but also for technology, like our protection of intellectual properties, our rule of law, our arbitration system, so on and so forth. All these are relevant and prevalent, not just in the financial services space, but also across different areas of business and financial professional services, like uh, technology, like a trade, like a trade finance, so on and so forth. And that's why, as I highlighted at the outset, we already have in place a number of initiatives. And one thing that has been proven quite successful, which also in display in this FinTech week, is about our achievements in the proof of concept subsidy program. So the whole idea for us is to link up the established financial institutions with the FinTech companies here in Hong Kong through a financial subsidy. Because as you can see, right now for many of traditional financial institutions, there may be certain inertia to take on something totally new. Yeah. So for us, as the government, we have to put in the right incentive in such a way that we can incentivize them to take on something new and also to see how it can be adopted within the organization. So with this proof of concept subsidy scheme, we bring them together. A fintech company has to partner with a financial institution and present us with a joint application for that subsidy. And also we particularly build in a cross-boundary element, which is the GBA. And we see that the results have been encouraging. And so far, I think we have around like more than 10 applications cross boundary. And also, all in all, we have uh, approaching 100 applications for this whole scheme. And many of them highlighted by you as just now is regarding enhancement of user experience, about like how InsurTech can facilitate better claiming process, and also how, for example, in particular, WealthTech can enhance the overall payment and also wealth management experience of individuals. Yeah. So there's something that very encouraging and at the same time very visible in terms of what the government can do and will continue to do to bring about tangible impact and also result in the fintech area. Yes, absolutely. Particularly uh, on the talent development side, I would say if we could all work together, the industry, the government and the universities and the community, Somehow we bring more internship uh, to the students for them to maybe work in Greater Bay, uh, work in different places and bringing out, particularly bringing out some of the newer skill sets, like say software, understanding risk management. Then going back to these traditional financial institutions and other services company, I think in the end, if you could combine, you think about the FinTech, I was just, you know, just pretty simple. I think it's a lot about how do you really look at the whole financial services value chain and using technology, particularly software, to look at a data-driven software technology helping the process to be more efficient and to be better risk management. I think having that exposure, bringing that internship and to the younger talents for them to go to these uh, places where they have a lot of innovation, software startups, SaaS companies, and bring them back, I think would be very helpful for the industry. Yeah. yeah. I think apart from internships, as you well said, um, 
like, I think it's, um, we are also looking into job scheduling opportunities. Yes. Because now young people are very busy, so yeah. they have their own life. So we can't really control that much in terms of what, how they can design their own life. But that said, we are contemplating, we announced this month a new program. Basically, the idea is to bring to our young people, in particular our university graduates here in Hong Kong, the successful experience of entrepreneurs in GBA and in China. Yes. And in fact, many of them are from the fintech space, yes. uh, like uh, virtual banks, so on and so forth, in such a way that they can share from them and direct from horse's mouth what it's like working in the mainland in GBA and to see how those experiences can be translated into their career planning. So it's something that we will do, and I definitely welcome you as one of our mentors in the program next time in such a way that our students can benefit direct from your wisdom. Yeah, it would be my pleasure and honor. Thank you so much, Secretary Hui, for having me, and also thank you very much for the audience for the participation. Thank